Singapore, a Pan-Asian beauty and cultural hub that will have you longing for more no matter what. In this video, I'm going to go over 20 things you must do in this vibrant city while you're here. So let's get right into it. 20 things to do in Singapore. You are absolutely gonna love it here. Number one is to go to Orchard Road. Orchard Road houses a lot of luxury malls, shops, restaurants, hotels. There's so much to do and see here. A lot of cute cafes. A stroll is great down the road. Number two here is also on Orchard Road. It was a big building called Orchard Gateway. I thought Orchard Gateway was so cool. It's literally this huge building which houses a mall, dining options, a gym. There were also offices. It was literally like an eat, work, and play all in one building and I just thought it was so cool. As you can see, there's so much hustle bustle. So, so cool, such great vibes. There's also a great rooftop where you can get some cool views as seen in some of these pictures I'm putting up here. Overall, really cool to just take a stroll through. We also went during the holiday season, so they had this cool holiday display outside. Number three in Orchard Gateway is the Orchard Library. I believe this is on the fourth floor. It's the iconic library on Orchard Road, and there's a picture of myself there. And as you can see, the structure is really cool. Number four is to go to Clark Key. This neighborhood is right on the water, and it houses a ton of restaurants and bars and really comes to life at night. Something else you can do, number five, is take a riverboat cruise, and you can get this from Clark Key. Honestly, I was very hesitant about the riverboat cruise, but it was one of the best things we did because the views are absolutely stunning. And it wasn't until we got on this boat cruise that I was really like, wow, I love this city. It is so sick. I wish I could live here. I'm just gonna leave this here for a second for you to marvel at the views. Number six here is Boat Key. If you keep walking along the promenade from Clark Key, you will come across this other neighborhood called Boat Key. Boat Key is another neighborhood housed right along the water and it's in an extremely long horn shape. As you can see in this video footage, it's really, really long and it's really cool. It's just lined with all restaurants and bars and it's such a vibe. We did go here for dinner one night no trip to Singapore would be valid without seeing the iconic Marina Bay Sands at number 7, or MBS as they call it locally. Marina Bay Sands is a luxury resort containing a casino, a hotel that sets you back $600 a night, and luxury shops and restaurants as well. Number 8 is the Marina Bay Sands Light Show, which is hosted right outside the docks at the Marina Bay Sands Resort. It's absolutely beautiful and a must-see while you're there. All the crowds gather at around 7.30 p.m. for the light show at night, and it's such a vibe. Also, that dome that you see in the back there is an Apple store floating on the water. How insane is it? The light show honestly was amazing, and it was so memorable, and I think it put the Dubai light show to shame, in my humble opinion at least. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've been to Dubai and seen that light show by the Burj. Number nine is the Marina Bay Sands observation deck up top. And I can't even talk about how insane these views are. You can see for yourself. I really wish I had footage from my camera, but I forgot to turn that on. So here it is from my phone. Literally insane. We also caught a drone show while we were up there, which I wish I'd caught on camera as well, but it was so cool. There's the garden by the bay. Number 10 is the Art and Science Museum, which is also extremely kid-friendly. They had this really cool crystal exhibit, which I'm sure you've all seen all over social media. It was really cool to check out in person and to walk through. Here's a few clips there. 
Number 11 is to go to the iconic gardens by the bay. You've definitely seen this if you've watched Crazy Rich Asians. Again, I wish I had better footage, but here it is from my phone. You can go to various different gardens. They have a ton of exhibits there as well. The coolest and my favorite was this cloud forest, which was basically the Avatar experience. And oh my God, if you're a fan of Avatar, you absolutely need to go here. It was so cool. The views are cool and it's also temperature controlled so you don't have to worry about being here in the heat. You can totally go during the daytime and be fine. It's nice and air conditioned so you will be okay, I promise. Number 12 is to go to the Merlion Park where it's basically a statue of the infamous Merlion spitting into the water. And if you do want to go to the other side, make sure you take the water taxi. Number 13 was the highlight of my trip, Lao Passat, which is a hawker center. This hawker center, don't even get me started, I have a lot of footage on this. It's so cool. It's basically a hawker center nestled in the middle of the financial district as you can see here. And you walk in and there's these beautiful green Victorian pillars up top. They have hundreds of stalls from fresh cut fruit to juices fresh sugar cane juice, unlimited. And that's not even the best part. The best part is you walk out all the way to the end of the Hawker Center and you walk outside to the other end and you come upon the Sate Street. I cannot even tell you how in awe I was of this. For some reason, I just thought it was so cool. And even cooler, you go down and as you can see, over to your left side of this outdoor food court situation, they have all of the halal chicken satays. They have chicken satay, lamb, goat, seafood. And then over to the right side, you have the non-halal. So as a halal eater myself, this was mind blowing for me. My mind was literally blown. And on top of that, if you go back here, all the way to the end, the left side was for the halal trays, right side was for non-food, uh, non-halal food trays, and I just thought that was so cool and I felt so good about eating there. Here's some footage of some fresh satay being grilled up on this open air grill. Well, let me know if your mouth is already salivating because mine sure is and I really, okay. really am missing this meal right now. This was the end result of a half eaten satay with sugar cane juice. Literally the best combo, and I feel like I lived off of that combo on the trip. <laughs> Number 14 is the Sultan Mosque. I thought this was gorgeous. This mosque or masjid literally looked like it was out of Aladdin because it was just so beautiful. The architecture was so crisp and clean with the beautiful large gold domes and the surrounding area was so nice, so symmetrical as well. All of these uh, alleys with the restaurants and cafes around are all halal. Uh, so if you do stick to a halal only diet, you have plenty of options in this area. There was also a wonderful Karak Chai place at the corner. Uh, one street over at number 15 is Arab Street. I don't have too much footage from here, but it was really cool to walk through. And number 16 here, another street over was Haji Lane. Haji Lane had a bunch of restaurants and bars, so I didn't really understand the naming of the street. If anyone has any more background or information on that, please do let me know in the comments below. I was kind of confused, but it was really cool and pretty to look at all the architecture and the murals. Number 17 was Chinatown. Here you can catch the gorgeous Buddhist relic temple. It was really cool walking through Chinatown because there are a lot of different restaurants and cute little boutique shops and of course freshly squeezed sugarcane juice. You know that I love that stuff and I drank one or two every single day of our trip and I just couldn't get enough of it. I'm missing it very much just seeing this footage now. So good, such a must do. Number 18 is go to Butcha Coffee. This is a chain coffee shop. I believe they have four or five throughout Singapore with the largest one being built in the airport. 
Uh, this one was in the Iron Orchard Mall, which is a must check out. Iron Orchard Mall is crazy and the food court is even wilder. Babacha Coffee is incredible. It's a Moroccan inspired coffee shop uh, and the food is Moroccan and French. They have different types of coffees, hundreds of different types of teas and croissants. The food was delicious. We had breakfast here and I loved it. Number 19, another highlight of mine was having afternoon tea at the Violet Oon restaurant in the National Gallery. So you can also, also check out the National Gallery after this. But the main reason I even chose this place to have afternoon tea at was because the entire menu had halal meat in it. Everything that was meat based was halal. So that was a absolute first for me in my life. I tried something called dry luxa. I even call, uh, got to try a bao bun for the first time in my life because typically I can't get these in a halal variation. Number 20 is the jewel at Changi Airport. Again, iconic and a complete must do. You can do this on your way out. Just make sure it's after 10 a.m. because that's when the area opens up for visitors. And there you go, there you have it. 20 things that you can do in Singapore. Trust me when I say this, I could probably do a video on 100 things and I cannot wait to go back. Make sure you subscribe for more videos similar to this one.